Hello everyone, I'm, I'm up first. This is a hard place to be because I don't know you and you don't know me. So, um, so what I want to talk about today was active support. And the reason why I want to talk about active support is because no one ever talks about active support. Everyone wants to talk about the crazy project, but let's talk about the project that we use every day. But um, let's, first, let's talk about something else first. Um, this is my badge and that's my crotch. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just wanted to inform everyone, ignore this, ignore this. Um, my name is uh, B-R-Y-A-N space L-I-L-S. <laughs> um, <laughs> my mom took a long time in giving me a name that no one could spell. And um, I just want everyone to know that that's how you spell my name. So let's talk about active support. <laughs> So here's the crazy thing about active support. Um, does anyone know of a library that was kind of like active support, but existed before active support and still exists today? Facets. Yes. Facets. The facets of Ruby. Um, I, I've actually knew about active facets before Rails even existed. And you know, I think everyone here should dig into facets. Um, it's at rubywork, rubywork.github.com these days. So um, let's look about that. Let's look at facets. So on the facets homepage, they give us this very interesting little blurb, and I'll read it for you. I usually don't do this, but trust me, it's funny. Ruby facets is the premier collection of general-purpose method extensions and standard additions for the Ruby programming language. What does that mean? Oh, well, I'll translate it to you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more. <laughs> makes me say. <laughs> so let's look at what really Ruby Facets really is. Ruby Facets is three things. There's a core Ruby Facets library, and there's a whole bunch of neat little utility things that you can use to make Ruby even more fun to program. And actually, that's the biggest thing about Facets. They make Ruby more fun to program when they're not messing up the rest of your libraries because they stumble. They, they trample all over uh, namespaces. But let's go into this and, and see what we got going on. So um, one little neat thing that Facets has is something called interpolate. And interpolate. So you just create a string and let's call it hello. And inside there, you can make a little um, interpolation here. And it does the same thing that it would do inside of ERB. Pretty simple. But I bet you didn't know that. Who here knew this, by the way? All right, I got, I've taught someone, I've taught something to someone in everyone in this room except for that guy. I'm, I'm looking for you. <laughs> so here's another one. Um, um, symbolized keys. Where have we seen symbolized keys? Where have we seen symbolized keys before? That's right. Where was it first? <laughs> Actually, I don't know. <laughs> um, David Hanemeyer Hansen is listed as contributor to this, and James Buck is contributor to this, and and um, active support, so I don't know, um, but there are some overlap. And this is what I was trying to show you. There is overlap. So how does the the, the bug in your slide. There's a bug in my slide? How does the V become the C? Magic. It's magic. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll let you guys know, there's no guarantee that anything you see on these slides is correct. I'm not entertainment only. <laughs> so moving on, we have um, UTC. Um, we see much more familiar versions of this kind of stuff inside of active support, but you know what? You don't need it because it's already inside of Facets if you choose to use it. And really what I'm here is just suggesting that there are alternatives to what, what you know or what you're used to. So we looked at the core library of Facets, and then of course, you know, there's a more library of Facets, and it gets a little bit crazier. You can get random letters because everybody loves to generate random letters. <laughs> and then there's um, something else that you've probably seen. Where have you seen this before? Active support. That's right, another active support similarity here. And you notice that you include memoizable, no namespace, no fastest namespace. So be careful when you use this stuff. So basically what this is doing for the uninitiated is we are saying that we're going to include this module name memoizable and we're minimalizing this method A. So it'll only be run once in the invocation of this class or this object. So the third part of FAST is something
something called on tour. I don't know why they call it this. They were trying to be funny. And inside of there, there was one interesting thing that I saw. There was a Y Combinator function in there. Who here knows how the Y Combinator works? Uh, I just put this slide up there because I thought it was neat looking code. I have no <laughs> idea how this works. <laughs> so, why do we have facets? Well, um, we have facets, or actually, uh -oh, uh -oh, okay. Why do we use facets, or why should our facets go? Facets are good because there's a lot of code in here, and even if you don't choose to use any of it, if um, all of us as developers should be reading lots of code, and there's lots of code in here to read. Um, take your lessons from it, whether it's good or bad, but at least you can read it. And make sure, don't follow this, use namespaces, please. So, active support. <laughs> and, and support is for the suspenders, not the hammock. <laughs> so let's talk about active support. And what I was trying to do here is there's some similarities between facets and active support. So, um, in all of David's wisdom, he put this blurb in like a readme file, and I'll read it to you. Active support is a collection of utility classes and standard library extensions that were found useful for the Rails framework. These additions reside in the blah, 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 and the blah, 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 to <laughs> Ruby on Rails. <laughs> what is David really saying here? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> So really what we have here is, and what David was trying to say is, back on February 15th, 2005, he realized that Active support and um, our active record and action pack were actually um, starting to have a lot of similarities in them. And he said, well, you know what? Let's create this thing called active support. And the cool thing is, I don't think there was any blog posts or anything. I actually just had to dig through this and find out where it was. And underneath here, whenever I release these slides, you'll notice that's the, um, that's the SHA-1 in, on GitHub for the project of whenever it came to existence, if you were curious. So, what is active support? Active support is all this. Um, what did they get right? They used namespaces. <laughs> um, so, let's talk more about active support. I've been up here for seven minutes and 15 seconds, so that means I have 23 more, and I have 80 more slides. <laughs> so, let's get started. So, I had to pick, I had to pick um, a small um, representative Hello? This is weird. I'm used to having like another mic, so. So I'm used to having like a, um, more time to talk about things, but I'm also used to uh, being able to go into things in a little more detail. So what I'm going to do for these um, six items is just glance over some of the cool things that I think are inside of um, action, action, action support. So the first thing is assessors. Um, what's the coolest thing about assessors? Anyone want to, um, Gander at that? You knew it. You knew it, didn't you? No, I just had to throw a slide of beer in there. There's nothing cool about assessors. But, <laughs> but let me tell you what you get inside of active support. Um, if you notice if you're using accessor, accessors are usually only for like your instance levels. Rails is like, you know what, we're better than that. We want we want accessors at our module and our class level. So active support gives you this. And here's the an accessor for um, at the instance level. And you notice that I just uh, I define the accessor and then I instantiate a cow and I name the cow Clarabelle. Um, I like examples with cows as classes, so you will see this a lot in this talk. So what else can we do with this? Um, so at a module, at a module and a class level, once again, you can just you, you can just use um, I don't know if you call it matter accessor and catter accessor. Um, you can call it what you want, but same thing. And this is pretty simple. Anyone using this stuff in your code? Does anyone here not know about this? See, that's what I'm talking about. This is why I want to see more talks about code that we all use every day that we don't use. <laughs> so let's talk about something else, more accessor stuff. So now we have accessor. We have adder, accessor with default. I bet you guys know what this is going to do. So what you can do is you can find an adder, accessor with default, 
and you can define the name, and you can define what the default value should be. So as my example goes, I defined it, I instantiated it, and then look at that. I didn't have to do anything, but um, it seems to work. If you're using Rails, don't get too excited. This does not work inside of Active Record. So that's a caveat. So moving on to benchmarks. All uh, right. So we always want to see how fast our code is. And a lot of us load up um, benchmark. We just, we just use benchmark, and we call benchmark by ourselves. But um, inside of active support, they actually give you code to make you do this very, very simply. So what we have here in this, in this, in this instance is we've included this active support benchmarkable. And, and then all you're doing is you're saying, inside of this block for doing crazy fast stuff, I want you to do this, and then tell me how fast it is. And you'll notice that I have a logger defined because it, it actually depends on the logger for your output. So when we tell it to perform, we get doing crazy fast stuff. Where have you seen this before? Anytime you look in your Rails log file, this is, how, this is actually how it works. I actually like this G Willinger slide. You know how um, how test all the mm -mm time is. This is going to be this is going to catch on. Trust me. I'm going to have everyone in here saying this. So now we have um, callbacks, and um, callbacks are a neat thing. Um, a couple months ago, I did a talk about um, active model, and active model it actually takes a big uses this a lot. And so let's look at this. So what you want to do is include active support callbacks inside of your code. And we'll define a callback called synergize. Because you know, we always want to synergize. So when we synergize, we're going to actually put out the standard in pivot complete. Because that's when you synergize, your pivot is complete. So OK, now that we have our startup, let's Let's make an instance of a daily deal startup. You might have heard of this before. So instead of, so now, after we synergize at a daily deal startup, we're going to retrieve more VC funds, because that's what we do. <laughs> so let's do this code. So we have daily deal startup, and that inherits from a startup, because it is a startup of some sort, less evil, or I mean more evil. Um, then we send the callback to synergize, and then we say after that, we synergize, we retrieve more VC funds. Anyone catch a typo on this one? Should that be a hash rock? I think it should be a, um, a symbol. Like I said, I'm here to entertain. <laughs> so after we retrieve more VC funds, I got rid of the code where you did all the soul sell and selling and other stuff, because that's not important. So now what we're going to do is take our new daily deal startup class, and we're going to instantiate it, and we've got hot deals. And then we're going to say, hot deal synergize. And we're going to be like, pivot complete, bring on the billions. <laughs> so um, I know we've seen this before. And actually, I actually typed in a Rails example of this. This is exactly how the after, all the callbacks inside of Active Record work. I mean, this is it exactly. I mean, there's a little bit of um, magic with Active Model, you know, with Rails 3 and whatnot. but. What you're seeing here is this, wrapped up nicely. So now you know how it works. <laughs> it's not every day that you find a little special kid on the internet and you just save that picture because you know you'll be able to use it later. <laughs> so this is what I do when I'm not <laughs> so what we have here now is um, um, this is this is how I felt the day back in like 2006 or 2005 ish when I mastered when I thought I mastered mixins and, and we all know what mixins are and I swear this slide right here will be the slide with the most amount of code on it so at a high level um, what we what we're doing here is we're defining a mixin and we're saying when it's included to extend the, what we were included, the base, with the class methods, and include the instance methods. This is how um, a lot of your plugins work inside of Rails. I mean, this is, this is just how it works. 
So now we have class methods and instance methods. Um, but what Yehuda Katz thought was, hey, this is way too much typing. So we fixed it. And, and what I want right now is um, there was a slide on Saturday Night Live, and um, the guy who was Keenan and Kel, is it Keenan? And um, it was um, it was after last year when we were having a whole bunch of debt problems. And the first thing he was like, you identify the problem, then you fix it. And he went on like five minutes doing this. So Yehuda identified the problem like this. That's old school. Hey. And he fixed it. And what they fixed it by is they actually created something called concerns. I don't know if I would have called it a concern, but that's what it's called. And really what we're doing here is we I've created my module Smarticus, because I have namespace, and then I have my module new awesome, awesome new feature, and it extends the concern. And what it allows me to do is get rid of a lot of that boilerplate code. I don't need the included anymore. Because as long as I follow the convention, I don't have to do the configuration. And where have we heard that before? What did you say? <laughs> so, um, I didn't do this on any of my other slides, but you'll notice that I actually required it this time. And in, in about 10 slides, I will tell you why I did that. So, we extended it, and then when we, well now, whenever we um, include this into our code, it'll do the same thing as this bad boy. But we don't need this crazy self.included thing that no one, no, no people understand it, but a lot of people don't understand it. So, moving on. So configurable. And uh, what I was trying to do is find a picture of something configurable. <coughs> this is an Arduino. This is pretty configurable. Lots of stuff you can hurt yourself with on there. <laughs> so let's talk about a piece of active support that I don't understand why it's in there. I just wanted to show it to you guys because it's in there, but I don't understand why anybody would use this. <laughs> so you can include something called app support configurable. And whenever you instantiate your new cow, um, you can actually now have a cal.config and you can set an, and you can set a config variable in there and you don't have to define it. Um, I mean I, I want to go off on a sidebar, but for years there's been something called OpenStruct. If you create something, if you create um, uh, you can create you can actually create it as a um, as a, a read only and then assign it to, and when you initialize it, assign it to an open struct. You don't need all the rest of that crazy active support configurable piece. But you know, it looks nice. So maybe that's why it's in there. So you can include active support configurable, and now you can do your config. There's a way you can do it where you can actually have, you can get rid of the dot config piece, and it would be cow.utter count. But don't do that. So next up is instrumentation. Anyone familiar with the instrumentation piece in Rails 3, Axport 3? No one's using this? Oh, man. Huh? You're using it? Familiar or using it? Using it. This is one of the coolest parts of Rails. So with instrumentation, there's basically this, there's this, um, it gives you a, I, I guess you could call it a queue inside of, inside of Rails, but you can say, when something, instrument, when something interesting happens, we can do this now. So let's look at it. So now, we're going to subscribe. What we're telling Active Support to do is subscribe this code inside of this block to an event. Whenever, whenever an event called milk comes, we're just going to put this event in, a, in an array called events. And we'll do something with it later. So now we listen, now we learn. So now what we're telling it to do is we're gonna, we're gonna create a new cow, and then we're gonna say the options is time, we're milking this cow now, and then we tell active support notifications to instrument this piece where we are milking and we just pass the options along. And what we get here is um, inside of our events hash, now when we listen, when we're listening, We'll get these events, and it's just a hash. I mean, it's just an array, so I can just say event name, duration, and payload. This is very simple. This is um, a very, very simple implementation, and actually, there's like other fan out and other crazy cure ones, but this is an 
easy way to do instrumentation inside of any app. You can be doing this in your Rails app today. Um, I know a lot of you guys use New Relic, but they don't think they do it this way, but they should be, because it's baked inside of Rails now. Last time, I promise. So, where does this leave us? Um, and this is another issue that we, this is my, actually this is the reason why I wanted to do this presentation, because I learned about a cool feature of Active Support 3, where if you're using Active Support 2 and you wanted to use it inside of a app that wasn't Rails, you actually had to include the whole entire thing in. And what it kind of did is made your app look like this. So you would have an app that might have 25 lines, but because you wanted to use time, um, you wanted to use, you wanted to use like one of the fancy um, five days ago, you now have a process that's taking up all these megabytes of memory. But now, you know, with Rails 3, we don't have this problem anymore. What you can do is you can require active support and it'll require the whole entire thing, or you can go in and cherry pick the pieces that you want. So if you only want the notifications framework, you can, you can get this. If you only want the callback framework, you can only get the callback framework. Pretty simple, right? You yeah. <laughs> I am here to entertain. <laughs> so um, this is what happens when you don't read, um, you don't understand how long you're going to need to give a presentation so you only make a 20 minute one because because a lot of conferences only do like 20 minutes and then you're supposed to get like five minutes for talking in there. So I created a 20 minute one. And um, thank you guys. <laughs> and I wanted to thank you guys for sitting, I don't see a lot of talks on just like code anymore. People, and this is no offense to anyone in this room who might be doing this today. People want to talk about their new fancy projects. I want to talk about a project that everyone uses all the time and knows nothing about. So what I did today is I explained to you guys, I probably taught you maybe seven things that you probably will never try, but at least you know about them now. <laughs> so um, thank you. Thank you. And you'll notice I didn't use one F word in the whole entire thing. So, <laughs> so uh, any questions? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> what else? Hmm? What else? About what? Yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what happened last night when I was driving along. I won't tell you that. <laughs> yes. Is instrumentation being used in Rails by Rails, or like why is it there? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. When I was doing the research for this, I actually I, I did git clone rails or a git clone git clone slash slash rails blah blah blah, and I did cd active underscore support, and that's where I stayed. I don't know if Rails uses it, but um, I think they, they do use it. I just can't tell how. I didn't know they use it though. Any other questions? This is a RubyConf man. In the back, Shane. Have you ever used facets in a project? Yes, actually, I have used facets in a problem. Since Rails? Yes, since Rails. So this is how I know about the whole namespace issue. Before um, Active Support became very robust, um, back about 2008, we tried to use facets. And what we would always find is that depending on what order you required things was depending on how your app would work. So like you said, so like the um, symbolized keys for hash, that is an Active Support now. If you have facets in there, which version do you get? So don't so don't use them both together at the same time. That's why there are there is some overlap between the two projects. But I do suggest that you go look at it just to see how in a different kind of style of how it all works. Any more questions? All right. Twenty-five minutes. It is twelve fifty-seven. Thank you guys.